11, and let's just read two verses. And the word of God reads, And when Athaliah, the mother of Ahaziah, saw that her son was dead, she arose and destroyed all the seed royal. Verse 2, and a priest by the name of Jehosheba, the daughter of a king, Joram, sister of Azahiah, took Joash, the son of Azahiah, and stole him from among the king's sons, which were slain. And they took him and hid. Y'all see that? They took him and hid him. Even him and his nurse. In the back chambers from Athaliah. So that he was not slain. So they took Joash hid him in the church, him and his nurse, so that he, along with all the other royals from that family, was not slain. For the time that we share, i like to lift this subject. Thankful for just two things. Thankful for just two things. If we took a look about us, if we took a look around us, and if we took a look within us, everybody who's tuning in to this broadcast right now would agree that looking about, looking around, looking within, we have so much to thank God for. For some people, he looked beyond your faults and he saw your needs. But for people like me, he did not necessarily look beyond my fault and see my needs. He actually looked at my fault and still met my needs. In 1897, I believe it was, a composer by the name of Johnson Oatman wrote a very familiar song which says, count your blessings and name them one by one. Count your blessings and see what the Lord has done. Now, if you've ever tried to do that, dear heart, you realize that as you are counting and naming your blessings, there's never a time when you can actually finish counting and naming them. Because number one, they're so numerous that there are too many to name. And number two, while you're naming them blessings, something starts to happen within you. Sometimes your hands go up and sometimes the tears fall from your eyes and sometimes a frog gets in your throat. Because you and I both know that we all got so much to thank God for. That everybody watching me who's tuned in today realize that the blessings of God that's on your life, you don't deserve. And so we understand that there's really, there's really, dear hearts, there's really just two main categories of the things that God has done, and that's the main, those are the main umbrellas whereby we can praise God for his goodness. The first main category is grace, and the second main category is mercy. So when you all come together and you boil down your blessings, they fall into one or two categories, and sometimes they may fall into both, one is grace, and the other is mercy. If there was ever a person who understood the grace and mercy of God, 
it is the guy in our text. The individual in our text is about is a name, a, a, a guy, a baby, an infant, by the name of Joash. The only thing this young man, this infant, this one-year-old did wrong really was to be born in a bad or from a bad bloodline. For he was born from a bloodline of people, of kings, that in, the, in, in Israel, they were bad kings. They worshipped Baal. They worshipped someone other than the true and living God. And he's only one year old. He's only one year old. And if there's ever a tragedy, the main tragedy in life will be the loss of innocence. And a one-year-old has nothing but innocence. But the Bible says in Luke 19, chapter, uh, uh, 19, verse 10, the Bible says that even if you are lost, Jesus came to seek and to save that which was lost. So the theme of this text is centered on Joash. Now, just to give you a quick backdrop of the text, in this text, you see somebody by the name of Athaliah. Athaliah, dear hearts, is the only known female ruler of any sect or the, the children of Israel. Every other ruler was a, a male. This is the only female that's in the Bible that ruled Israel. And she became ruler when her husband, the, the Bible believes, people believe, when her husband was killed. And after her husband was killed, she had a son named Azahiah. And Azahiah was also killed. He would have been next in line to the dynasty, to the royal dynasty. But what Athaliah did was she decided she wanted to stake claim on that rulership. So what she decided she was going to do was to kill all male factors in her family so that none of them would be able to become king. She was, believe it or not, the daughter of a very familiar woman in the Bible by the name of Jezebel. And she took that Jezebel spirit within her and she decided to kill to massacre every man in her family so that she can remain queen of that day. The Bible says that she massacred, and historians like Josephus believe that she beheaded every man in her family. And if you understand something about a beheading, dear hearts, when she beheaded every male in her family, when you behead somebody, if you behead them with a clean cut, it's painless. But if you behead them with something like a dull knife, it's one of the most painful things that can happen. So we believe that it was more of a mercy killing because she did not necessarily want to hurt her family. She just wanted to get rid of her family. So they believe that she killed them by beheading decapitation with something like a, a guillotine. And when that happens, with an average beheading, Pastor Hager, the average beheading will render about two liters of blood that leaves the body. Keep that in mind. Two liters of blood that leaves the body. It is believed that she killed between 42 and 70 men in her family. But the Bible says that one escaped. And ain't that something with our lives? So much could be going on around us. But God will always have at least one to escape. Amen. So the first thing that we see in this text is, number one, because we only got two things to thank God for, okay? Number one is the gift of grace. Number one, the gift of grace. Grace. Now, grace, dear hearts, is defined as God giving you what you do not deserve. Did you hear me? Grace is God giving you 
what you do not deserve. I like to also call it as God's unearned activity in your life. Activity, blessings that you did not earn, he still gives to you. That's grace, his unmerited favor in your life. So, for example, if you blink your eyes, if you close your eyes and they still open after you blink them, that's great. Because many of us have looked twice, but we had no business looking once. If you are able to walk, put one foot in front of the other without falling, that's grace. Because truth be told, we've gone somewhere that God would not have gone had he not been, had he not been omnipresent. If you breathe in and breathe out, if you breathe in and you're able to breathe out, that's grace. Because the psalmist understood, so he says, let everything that have breath praise the Lord. Now understand that Joash was in midst of a massacre that he was the only one only male to be left alive. So grace, the grace of God on his life spared his life. And like Joash, he was supposed to be dead. And just like you and me, we were supposed to be dead. But there's nothing like the grace of God that's on our lives that ultimately spares our lives. So if you are listening to me, Everyone that's listening to me, everyone under the sound of my voice has understood, whether you recognize it or not, the gift of grace. So when you look in the mirror tomorrow or tonight or later on, when you look at the mirror, you're not a misfit. You are a grace case. In other words, in other words, grace did it. Grace did it. The second thing that I want to share with you is not only do we in this text see the gift of grace, but number two, we also see the manifestation of mercy. Not just the gift of grace, but also the manifestation of mercy. So yes, you are a grace case, but there's a lot of mercy that has been dispensed on your life also. Now, grace is God giving you what you don't deserve. His sister or brother is mercy. Mercy is God keeping from you what you do deserve. You see, grace is God giving you what you don't deserve. Yet mercy is God keeping from you what you do deserve. So not only are you a case for grace, but your life has been filled with moments of mercy. I told you before that there are three general kinds of mercy that I like to say. The first kind of mercy is micro mercy, mercy for little stuff. And then there's macro mercy, mercy for big stuff. And then there's mega mercy, mercy for the worst stuff. I, I don't think y'all get me. Um, uh, um, there are different types of mercy. So maybe if I, if I bowl down your alley, bowl down your lane, you can understand this one. You, you, you hung out with some friends one night. And while you were hanging out, you drank more than you should. And when you woke up, you were at home. You don't even realize how you got home you were so drunk. So that's a drunk mercy. Uh, if, if you are in this time and you got COVID with more than a cold and you're still here to tell about it, that's a viral mercy. If you're a parent, if you're a mother or a father, and you've got children that you know you haven't not necessarily been the best parent alive, the best parent all the time, but you got these children that still love you and they're still alive and well, that's a parental mercy. So God has different mercies for our different messes. And that's why the book of Lamentations chapter 3 says, morning by morning, new mercies I see. Morning by morning, did you get that? New mercies I see. Because when you went to sleep last night, you used up yesterday's mercy. And when you got up this morning, he dispatched new mercies. So the Bible says, great is thy faithfulness because of your mercy. A few years ago, I stayed up all night. And I got a lot of stories, but at least I'm not lying. I stayed up all night and I did not set my alarm clock. When I woke up, I rushed out the house to get to work on time, and I was flying down the street going 
55 in a 25 mile, watch this, mile an hour school zone. I did not know I was traveling that fast. Well, as I'm traveling 55 in a 25 mile an hour school zone, at one point I look out my side view mirror and I see a police car. Well, I look down noticing then that I was speeding. But the police car that was on the side of me eventually got in front of me and slowed down. He stuck his fingers out of the window and he put two, five. He slowed me down and put his fingers out the window and said two, five. Do you get that? The law slowed me down put his fingers out the window and said two five. Now he was supposed to give me a ticket, but he gave me mercy. Do you get that? He slowed me down. Listen, he got in my way and gave me himself. He got in my way and gave me himself. Not a ticket, but he slowed me down to stop me from going too fast and possibly get letting me get into an accident. And how many of you all can actually say that something about the law, somebody somewhere who's bigger than you are, got in front of you, slowed you down so you wouldn't hurt yourself. Now you deserve to be hurt, but he got in front of you, slowed you down, and gave you himself. That's why Isaiah 53, 2 says that there's no beauty that we should behold him. Why? Because all of the bad stuff that was put on him was actually for us. So we don't desire his beauty. So mercy placed him, mercy placed on him what should have been placed on us. That's mercy. Um, I hope I don't embarrass anybody, but I have a goddaughter named Faith Brooks. And some years ago, her mother called me to the hospital said it was an emergency because they needed to rush her to the hospital. She could have been between one and three years old. And I left work and I rushed to the hospital. But when I got to the hospital, when I got to the hospital, I saw the mother, mother and, and, and the baby, and the daddy was holding the baby. And when, But when I walked up to the mother, when I walked up to the mother, I saw blood on the mother. Did y'all hear me? I saw blood on the mother, although the mother called me about the baby. If you look at this particular text, Joash is one year old. If there's anything that a one year old is going to do is cry. But because of the massacre, because of the bloodshed that was around Joash, he, the Bible says, was covered in the blood of somebody else. Y'all not ready? Joash, a one-year-old, cried, ah, 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 but they couldn't find him because the blood of somebody else was covering him. So when I got to the hospital and I saw my, my, my friend and her baby, I looked at her and I said, you called me for faith, but you got the blood on you. She then said, that's my baby's blood. And that ain't the first time that we've known something about somebody else's blood covering us. Because on a cross called Calvary, yeah. Jesus went to Calvary and shed his blood for us. Yeah. So grace is what God did, but mercy is what God hid. Amen. Amen. I'm too happy. I'm going to stop right there. I'm too happy. I'm getting too Grace, what God did, but mercy preach it, preach it. is what he hid. You don't look like everything you've been through because his mercy has always been on you. Yes, sir. And I know you got a lot to thank him for, but just consider those two things. I'm grateful for what he did. But I'm also grateful for what he hid. 